the channel. Today I'm going to be giving a brief overview of, uh, you know, what uh, classes are like here uh, in Singapore, uh, specifically at NTU as an exchange student. So to uh, be more specific, I'll touch on the difficulty of classes as an exchange student, uh, what you should expect from the uh, classes, and uh, I'll, I'll compare some of the classes to um, maybe similarities uh, and differences between, you know, NTU classes and classes back at uh, my university in the U.S. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. So to start off this video, I want to essentially just touch on the, uh, the difficulty of classes here at um, NTU and uh, yeah, talk about how they compare to the U.S. specifically. So I would say that the classes here at NTU, specifically the engineering classes, as I am a mechanical engineer, are uh, far from easy. If you're coming here as an exchange student, you should be uh, expecting to have to put in the work. Um, I study a lot during the days, and uh, they're definitely not a walk in the park. But that being said, comparing the classes to what I'm typically used to in the U.S. studying at uh, the University of Wisconsin-Madison at their mechanical engineering program, I would say that the classes are relatively um, comparable in the amount of work. Uh, I take four classes here currently, uh, three of which are engineering core classes, and I would say that those three engineering core classes stack up pretty evenly to what I have experienced throughout my time in uh, the States studying at UW-Madison. However, the big difference is that the average student here at NTU takes six to seven courses um, in a semester instead of just the standard four that um, I am taking and that a lot of people typically take at other universities. So that means that exchange students are typically taking, you know, up to sometimes 50% less coursework than the um, non-exchange students. So that definitely is um, a factor to consider when taking courses that are on a bell curve. Even though they may seem relatively comparable, the average student that is non-exchange is taking so much more. So that definitely helps the bell curve as they have less time to uh, focus on courses. But regardless, I would say that they are uh, difficult, but not anything out of the ordinary. Now that you have a uh, brief little overview of what, how I find the classes here at NDU as a mechanical engineer, um, I'd like to kind of dive into some of the uh, specific classes that I'm taking and uh, briefly touch on what they are um, like, the difficulty, and the amount of time that I spend on them. To start off, I'd like to talk about the only non-core engineering course that I'm currently taking. Uh, that being Chinese uh, 1 or Chinese level 100. So for this class specifically, uh, a lot of the uh, of my classmates are actually exchange students because it is Chinese level 1 and it is a very um, appealing class to exchange students. Um, and a big reason of why it's uh, appealing is that it's, it's not the most difficult class. There is uh, one lecture a week it is a three hour straight lecture, and then there's some homework every week that's, you know, you hand in and whatnot. But as a whole, it's not that hard. I, uh, for the first couple weeks, I honestly spent very little time outside of class working on it. You're able to do the homework in class, and they make this class extremely um, doable for someone that has never learned Chinese before or has no knowledge of Chinese going into the class. And uh, after speaking with the uh, teacher, he said that the class is made easier on purpose to um, facilitate the want to move to Chinese level two. So the whole idea behind the Chinese classes here is to not discourage new learners from the language due to the difficulty of the class. So as an exchange student, it's very good and honestly perfect to take because it's impossible to fail and honestly it's really fun I love it it's a really good language and um, it's a great way to maybe meet with some of the uh, locals within uh, the class 
The next three classes that I'm taking are engineering specific courses. And uh, for me, they are engineering core courses that are mandatory for me to um, graduate with my major. The first one that I'm taking and the uh, probably easiest one, but it's not necessarily the best class is my manufacturing class. The uh, code number for the class is MA2004. And this class is will not be available at NTU in the future. It is now merged with um, manufacturing and material science. However, a lot of the information will be the same and will still apply. It is a relatively easy uh, class on the actual concepts. There's nothing hard. There's no hard figuring out how to do problems. It's all plug and chug or do you know this information, yes or no. However, the amount of information covered is insane. There is probably five hours of lecture a week that it takes me five hours to go through, maybe three hours of actual video. And the amount of information is overwhelming. Um, I, I'll show um, a brief little uh, video right now of me flipping through my pages of notes for this class. And as you can see, there is just an insane amount of information. None of it's hard, but it is a cram study type of a class. But I would say this is extremely typical of a manufacturing class and there's, there's nothing out of the ordinary about it. It is exactly what I was expecting going into it. And I wouldn't say it's a hard class. So if you're an exchange student in mechanical engineering looking to take um, manufacturing or the manufacturing and material science class, it's not a bad one because as long as you do the work, watch the lectures, it's not a class that will prove to be tough due to the actual complexity of the problems. It's all about effort. So the next class that I'm taking is ECE level 100 for mechanical engineers. To be specific, that is um, electrical circuits for um, mechanical engineers. It's a level 100 class. It's an intro to uh, basic circuits and um, the uh, theory behind them. As a whole, the class, once again, isn't very bad. It is a little bit more complex than the uh, MA2004, and I think the course code for this ECE class is MA2009. Uh, this is another class that I would highly recommend to exchange engineering students, as it is, um, it is once again made relatively easy. If you do the work and at least apply the theorems on all of the tests, you'll get 60%. All the tests, 60% of them, is just apply the theory or formula, and if you know how to use it, you'll be able to do it. So I would say it's a relatively um, straightforward class. It's very similar to the classes in the U.S. at UW-Madison, and uh, I, would, I would give it a, a, good, a good rating, like a 8 out of 10. Interesting class has good lecture and the uh, discussions are really good, which is uh, extremely different from the manufacturing class. I would not give that a good rating. While it is an easy course, extremely boring. And let's move on to the final and by far the hardest course. So the final course that I am taking here at NTU is MA3003. So with it starting with a three, it is a third year class it is significantly harder and it is heat transfer. Um, here at NTU, heat transfer is probably the hardest mechanical engineering course. All the uh, local students almost gasp when I say that I'm taking um, heat transfer here as an exchange student, but I would say it's no different than what it's like in the U.S. Obviously, it's a class that you could very easily fail if you don't put in the time and effort, as it is not a um, purely understanding type of a class. You know, the tests are long problems where you have to work and think through them uh, cognitively. And um, I know that it's given some other exchange students problems in the past, uh, specifically like uh, some students from Australian schools they uh, and other schools that don't do that style of test. But if you were an exchange student from the U.S., I would say it's a very straightforward, you know, you do thermodynamics and it feeds right into heat transfer. 
It would help if you had some fluids, but it is the same concept and learning style, you know, given this formula and you have to figure out how to apply it. For the difficulty of this class, I put in, the amount of time that I put into my other three classes is still less than the amount of time that I put into this heat transfer class. I spend a lot of time on the lectures. The um, weekly homework for the discussions is quite difficult and uh, the, the tests are also quite difficult. But once again, I would say it's, it's the most similar to a core engineering course um, at the, in the US that you can find here at NTU. Uh, would I recommend it to exchange students? Um, maybe not if you are looking to do much more traveling, have an easier semester because it is a hard course, but it is the most, behind Chinese, is the most interesting course, the lectures keep you engaged, and the homework, you know, it's hard, it takes a long time, but it is engaging and enjoyable to do the homework. So, yeah, that kind of wraps up my specific engineering courses um, and my thoughts on each individual one, and uh, I'll briefly talk about some of the uh, courses and what my friends have experienced. So, here at NTU, um, I have definitely noticed that uh, many exchange students find the courses as a whole harder than their home universities. Um, I'm not sure if that's due to a uh, lower amount of effort being put into the courses, due to traveling and maybe not studying the same, partying more, but the uh, a lot of my buddies um, have uh, lower grades in their courses than they've ever had before at any other point in time in their schooling career. However. This is not the biggest deal as uh, you can apply for pass fail at most um, universities when you're on exchange, which I would highly recommend. So now on some course recommendations, I would highly recommend taking Chinese level one. That is the best course for um, exchange students that are looking for an easy time when they um, first get into the community and uh, for, for like just an overall fun exchange. The second course that I would recommend is the, um, the course on uh, Chinese economics. That is another um, course that is uh, definitely um, more appealing to exchange students that is, is, as it is not crazy hard and um, is, a, is a very interesting course and is uh, fun to take if it fits with your schedule. The final recommendation that I have is taking some of the psychology courses. I've heard that the psychology courses, um, while maybe not the easiest due to a large amount of writing, they're definitely fun and not as hard as some of the core engineering courses or the core computer science or business school courses. So that I would also recommend. Now on to the final and probably most important recommendation is the sports courses. They have sports courses here at NTU, such as, I think there's a volleyball course and a, um, a tennis course and a few others that are literally gym class. As an exchange student, I would highly recommend these. These are great classes to communicate and actually meet other students here at NTU and help you become part of the uh, community. I personally wish I would have taken these, but they fill up extremely quickly. So if you're looking at taking those, apply for them as soon as possible because they are high demand classes that everyone wants, but definitely do them. To wrap up this video, I'd like to give you guys, the viewers, some tips, tips and tricks that I would uh, recommend um, employing here at NTU as an exchange student, as uh, I am just coming up to my finals, the end of my term, and there's definitely a few things that I wish I would have known. So the first thing that I would like to touch on is the, um, the uh, online platform for courses. Definitely become familiar with the online platform, specifically NTU Learn. It is uh, extremely helpful knowing how to use this, find your required materials, and actually just read those materials. The second recommendation that I have is to utilize the libraries. The libraries are so beneficial for actually sitting down and just grinding out work. 
But the one thing I wish I would have known is the reservation of seats. So here at NTU, you can reserve seats in the library as the libraries are typically overly packed and there's nowhere to sit. So what you can do is go onto the Lib Calendar website and reserve seats so that you are guaranteed a place to study, which is um, extremely important because showing up to library and not having a seat really sucks. And now my last tip for studying and preparing for courses here at NTU is to simply do your work on time, do it ahead of time, do it during the weekdays. You don't want to be doing work on the weekends as an exchange student. So just put your head down and do it during the weekdays, you know, Monday to through Thursday. Make sure you get your stuff done early. Make sure you're studying early so that you don't have to cram for the tests at the end or so that you don't have to be doing a bunch of work on the weekend when you know you won't be because you want to go explore Singapore or the um, various countries around it as flights are very cheap. So yeah, that wraps up all of my tips and tricks and I guess this whole video on studying at NTU as an exchange student in mechanical engineering. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, catch you in the next one.